Hi, and welcome to the Virtually Yours podcast, Outsourcing Mysteries Exposed, the no BS hustle-free podcast for business owners who outsource or provide outsourcing services. I'm your host, Rosie Shiloh, virtual assistant advocate and owner of Virtually Yours, the virtual assistant network. Let's get started. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Outsourcing Mysteries Exposed. I'm Rosie Shiloh, your host, and today I have a dear friend of mine, Rachel Allen, here to chat to us about business marketing and a couple of other little bits and bobs, which is very exciting. Welcome, Rachel. Hi, Rosie. Thank you for having me. My absolute pleasure. How are you today? I'm feeling really good. School's yeah. back. Yes. Yeah, I was kind of dreading the whole school's back thing because I'm not a morning person and I was actually just joking before with my insurance guy that I would be, I think I'd be a better mum if school started at 11 rather than 9, All right? So, because that whole rushing in the morning thing just makes me a cranky head. So, I was like dreading that. I'm like, oh no, the whole morning thing. But it's feeling, you can't get back into work until school starts. Yeah. So it has been quite nice to actually start to feel like we're mellowing into it. Mind you, I've got a little one starting kinder. So she's got yesterday an hour at kinder, tomorrow an hour and a half. So, yeah. No time at all. No, it's really weird. But I, I did grab a coffee during that hour. Went to office where it's bought this new keyboard and then grabbed a coffee. And so I kind of quite like that. I think it's um, mum's... Because you go back to school, then you're like, right, I've got to get back into work and that's it. Yes. And they forget to actually stop and take some time out for themselves. So I've been to the gym a couple of times this week where I've just dropped her at school, gone to the gym. Yeah. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like that half an hour or the 40 or hour, by the time I get there and then get home again, that takes me at the gym is yeah. nothing compared to what I can do in the rest of the day. Absolutely. So it's just it's that self-care stuff. You know, we think we've got to go to school, we've got to get back into work and it's the start of the year and let's just throw ourselves into work. Yeah, yeah, which is crazy. And how much more productive are you after you've done that in the morning? Yeah. Unless, you, unless you come home and have a nap because you're tired. <laughs> no, you don't do that. <laughs> and if, you want to, if, you, if you want to, I give you permission. <laughs> you know what actually happened the other day? So it's on, it's on topic of what we're talking about now, but not on what we scheduled. I was um, getting my car washed. I was spending a small fortune getting my um, seven-seater. Oh, my gosh. The more seats you have, the more the cost is to get it cleaned. And over Christmas, you know, we went away a couple of times and we had a few triathlons and all that. So you can imagine how dirty the car was. And they had a look at it and went, <clears throat> yeah, that's going to be $150, but it's going to be immaculate. And I'm like, oh, my God, shoot me now. But this place has a cafe inside and a really cool little simple but beautiful, colourful kids area. And so what I do is I bring my laptop and I do a little bit of work while they're cleaning the car and my daughter plays really happily with the toys. And I sat down with my laptop because, you know, I had time to do some work and I'm looking at it blankly just going, I don't know what I'm meant to be working on. Like I'm just blank. And I messaged my team on Facebook. I'm like, guys, I'm at this car wash. I've got my laptop here. I've no idea what I'm meant to be working on. And they're like, okay, so how are you going with this project? How are you going with that? I'm like, yeah, they're okay. No, they're fine. And then one of them goes, here's an idea. Why don't you relax and have a coffee? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that is a damn fine idea. I know. I know. <laughs> Why did not like, I just needed someone to give me permission to, to just do that. Grabbed a couple of magazines, had my drink, turned the laptop off. And I wasn't going to get anything done properly, but this way I actually had some time out and it was so nice. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got to do it, don't we? Productivity in your business. Sometimes yeah. it's best to do nothing. Agreed. And I have found over the last two years that now as people are shocked at how few days I've been working because, you know, I've got the kid on the foot and everything. Um, because I don't work five days, I'm so productive on the days I'm on. Because when I'm off, I'm allowed to be off. Yeah. Whereas if you're plodding along five days a week trying to remain productive, it's yeah. that to me is the craziest concept. I don't know who thought of it, but it's just crazy land. It's these people that go to work nine to five, five days a week, they thought of it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I, I think they're all trying to get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And there's been so much 
much evidence to support the idea that three or four days a week is way more efficient, way more productive, yet there's been no change to support that. It's bizarre. No. So, <coughs> let's get back on topic. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I like that topic. I think it's important to, yeah. to, yeah, to yeah. remember just chill pill people. Chill pill. I wrote a book about it. <laughs> there you go. Have you got a copy of it there? For we've got some people will be on audio and some will be visual. So there you go. When business meets baby, I've got a copy here too. Um, and if you, yeah, we'll put a link to that in the the um, show notes because yeah. yeah, you published that. Wasn't last year? Was it? Was the year before? Two thousand and sixteen. It came out December. Oh, I know, ages ago. <laughs> yeah, that feels like forever now. Sixteen. Oh, no. <laughs> Crazy. Wow. Okay. Great. So today we wanted to be talking about some of that um, definition of success type stuff, bit of mindset, confidence, and all that sort of thing. So we've started on the right foot, and then we're going to have a look at some of that marketing. So let's start with what what are your views on um, how people define success? Yeah, I think that this is really personal and you really need to do a lot of soul searching around what it means for you to be a success. Mm. So for me, it's I work four days a week within school hours in my business um, and if I can do that and hit my financial targets, then I feel like I'm a success. If I can change people, you know, help people, change them, empower them to become better versions of themselves in business, then I'm a success. You know, it's like those... Those small things are what turns me on. It's not the fancy car, it's not the big house, it's not the yacht, it's not the massive holidays overseas or you know, all of that stuff. Yep. Even though it's, sometimes it'd be nice, but that's not what I define as success. So I think it's something that's individual for everyone. Yeah, and I completely agree, yeah. Yeah, and I think to understand what success means to you, you really need to work out, well, what do I want? You know, what do I want out of my business, what do I want out of my life? What am I, you know, where am I heading and what am I doing? And, and when I get there, what, what am, how am I going to know that I'm a success? And, yeah. Yeah. So have you got any ideas around how, what people can do to help them get that out of their heads? Because we, we're often bombarded with everybody else's definition of success. So yeah. our own definition of success can be possibly quite hidden away yeah. um, underneath this, you know, inundation of, you know, to be successful, you need to be turning over six, seven, eight. People are going crazy with their figures now. Yeah. Um, you need to be, yeah, have, as you said, the fancy car and be going on holidays every other weekend. Yeah. Um, and so we're being told what people's definition of success is because that dream for the person telling it um, helps them sell. So, um, and now that we're all on social media all the time, we see it constantly. So how can we step back and work out our own definition of success? But I think um, there's two things. Do a digital detox. So actually come off all that stuff for a little while just to clear your head because you do, my newsfeed gets full of, you know, there was someone on there the other day going, I made, you know, $10,000 in my first week in this awesome business and I can show you how. And I'm like, are you for real? Like, seriously, that just doesn't happen in the real world. Um, <laughs> So unless you're trying to sell a ten thousand dollar program to someone that you're going to tell them how to earn ten thousand dollars in the first week of business, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's I think de detox, turn off from all of that stuff. I've actually just recently turned off all the notifications on my phone, mm -hmm. except for like big emergency and the school um, app and stuff like that. But everything else I've turned off because it was just doing my head in. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second like journal is such an like people have been saying it for years, just sit there and journal, talk about what, you know, think of yourself in five years' time or at the end of your business or whatever. What does your day look like? What does your week look like? You know, just sort of brain dump mm -hmm. you know, what it means for you to be a success in business and, and where you're going to go. And as you're journaling, the more you journal, the more these free-flowing thoughts are going to come out. Yeah, it can be quite hard to get that started, can't it, if you're oh. not in that as a habit? Absolutely. And do it with like typing on a computer hasn't got the same sort of brain connections as what writing does. Yes. So write it because it your hand is connected to your brain and it works better. Yeah. You think that by now evolution would have allowed us to 
put that typing connection into our, <laughs> into our brain. Give it another generation, I think. In that I was gonna, maybe our kids will be like that, who have yeah, grown up on yeah. devices and stuff. But yeah. Where the yeah. brain goes, that's where A is. Okay. Ooh, like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> so I think that they're the two, like just detox, get away um, and really reconnect back with who you are mm. instead of who everyone, you know, looking at everyone else's highlight reels and journal and just keep writing until suddenly one day you go, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's not, a, not an exercise you can do in 10 minutes or whatever. It's an evolving thing and it changes. Yeah. 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 And to regularly sit down, I think, and write down what your ide ideal day looks like. Um, because as you said, that will evolve and that will always change, but you'll start to see common themes in there. Um, and to, to realize that your ideal day, your ideal working day, um, may be more achievable than you think. Um, and it's, and it's about just enjoying the simple things in life and, and having choice and freedom. They're the core things that keep us, you know, happy. Um, you know, so if for some people it is about the material things and they want to be out there and hustling and doing all the thing and to them, the ideal day is speaking in front of, you know, a thousand people and getting in there early and having these, all these excitement and vibe and coming home and, you know, <clears throat> watching, you know, a movie at the end of the day in their cinema room or whatever it might be. And then for someone else, that definition of success is completely horrifying and they would want the exact opposite of that. So yeah. sitting down and thinking, okay, if I got up in the morning, so for me, the ideal day, school doesn't start till 11. Um, <laughs> I've got my insurance guy comes and he brings coffee with him. Yeah. You know, so today I'm having a really, really good day. And I think acknowledging, um, you know, those lovely little things that are happening in, in our existence at the moment or little things that you can bring um, into it just by being more aware of them yeah. um, we realize that success isn't this elusive thing success is your choice exactly and there's a whole bunch of words and everything that you can put in there as well as to what success you know how you define success and stuff mm -hmm. but I think you first need to understand you as well and I think and it connects a lot with why you started a business as well you know if I go I've, I've changed, I suppose, over the years to conform with people, to say, you know, all these fluffy things about why I'm, I'm in business. But at the core of it, I'm in business because I don't like working for other people. <laughs> yeah, I don't like being restricted to you must turn up at 9 o'clock and leave at 5 and you can only take holidays at this time. I don't like that. That's just not me. So for me, the core of me being in business is to have that flexibility. And, you know, you know, and this, obviously, all the other things of helping people and everything come on top of that. But at the core of it, that's what it is, it's plain and simple. So I think as long as I can keep that and I can keep being not having to be employed by other people, then that's the success to me. Yeah. Yeah, being able to pay your bills mm -hmm. with that freedom and flexibility, I agree. It's just been the same thing because obviously the other benefits around that, around being able to go to school activities and all that, that all comes under choice and flexibility. Yeah. Um, if you've got a headache, you're feeling crappy when you wake up, not having to go and get a bloody certificate from the doctors, to me that is just so counterintuitive. Oh, no. um, and having to explain your, you know, how many hundreds of days a week, a year to somebody else, to me is, is just torture. And so I always joke about how I'm completely unemployable um, because I just, yeah, I, and I'm proud of it because I've been able to, um, you know, we're raising a family, we're paying off a mortgage. Um, my husband and I are both unemployable and yet we're making it work because we're driven by something different and we know that and we're making that our reality. But yeah, you've got to know who you are and what drives you and, and what your, your, um, what your core values are. Yeah. And what you're doing, like why, and it's that motivated because business goes like this. You have days where you're going, I'm killing it today. This is awesome. And then you have other days where you go, what am I doing? And then <laughs> where you have one hour where you're killing it. And then the next <laughs> hour you're like, oh my God, what am yeah. I doing? <laughs> so I think you get to a point where you go, you've got to have that, where, what am I doing this for? What's the bigger picture? Where am I heading? What does success mean to me? And have that as your motivation just to keep 
going through those days where you're going, oh, what am I doing this for? Yeah, yeah, you've got to have a big why as well as your ideal day, I think. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and to me, all of that's just encompassed in success. Yeah, and yeah. so confidence and intuition coming to that, that's something that you like to, to touch on. Um, yeah. in, in the sort of training and stuff you do. And I actually should come back after we talk about this, about how you work and what you do so people can get to know you a bit better. Um, yeah. But what, what are your thoughts around, um, you know, business, women, confidence and intuition? I think there's so many women out there in business who are being held back by themselves. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, the people that are stopping them is them. And it all comes down to confidence. The confidence to jump on a recording and do a podcast, jump in and do a webinar, um, you know, jump out and do a live event to speak, to write a book, to create a blog, to do your website. You know, I talk to women who, you know, they've got all these excuses as to why they can't step up and just be that little bit better. And I know they can do it. Yeah. And it's just pushing them gently. And you know, I had a client come to me at the end of last year and, and I said to her, I want you to go away and I want you to think about your big goals for next year. And she came back to me and she said, I want this goal, this goal, this goal. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's really nice. Said, so what, there's something missing. What do you really, really want to do? And she goes, I want to speak in front of people. <gasps> and I went, but you didn't write it down. She goes, because I don't feel I can do it. Oh. Went, right. So next year you're going to go speak at a conference. We picked a conference. We picked everything out. And then, we set, and then I set her tasks about going and, um, she went to a speaker workshop. She has written out a keynote speech. And I'm like, right, so next week, oh, we're meeting in a couple of weeks' time now, you're going to contact those organisers. So it's just, you know, it's that. And the only thing that's holding her back from doing it was herself. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I think, and she didn't even have the strength to write it down. But that is, that's epic. You know, that yeah. shows the level of, of you know, uh, the lack of ability to commit to something that scares you is exactly. even putting it to pen and paper. Yeah, yeah. And I really believe that you have to do something, you know, if there's people who say, you know, do something that scares you every day or every week or whatever, but I know as mums we get caught up in life. Yeah. So do something once a month that scares you. Mm -hmm. Talking before about a triathlon, making you feel scared before you jump in and do it. So do something that scares you like that. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be big. It can be a small thing. You know, yeah. some people, you know, jumping, going to a networking event scares them. So go to a networking event once a month, and then the more you go to, the easier it gets. Yeah. So it's that building your confidence, and you know, it doesn't mean jumping out of a plane necessarily. It's just do that thing that you've never wanted to do. Yeah, or never thought you could do. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, I never I never in my wildest dreams ever thought that I would call myself a triathlete, right? And um and and I find that term still <laughs> hilarious because athlete and me are just <laughs> it's just <laughs> that's funny. Um <clears throat> but you know, because I'm doing the events, technically I'm a triathlete and um and yeah, it's terrifying and every single time I go, I just feel so nauseated and then I get in there with everybody else who's feeling exactly the same way yeah. and we all just keep moving forward together and it's brilliant and you finish and you just go oh my gosh I am a superhero of course it's amazing and I think the key that you've got there is you've got support as well you've built that support in around you so that when you turn up at triathlon you do it because everyone else is there you know supporting you along yeah yeah, yeah. You've got to have the right communities around you and people around you. Um, and, and that is one of the, probably one of the keys to helping you if you're struggling with your confidence is making sure the people around you are lifting you up and not pulling you back down again. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you can't blame everyone around you. You've still got to be the one who takes that. Oh, you've got to take responsibility for yourself at the start. Yeah. I was at a conference last year and someone, um, actually said at the conference that they're in this room of women and they felt that we were like barrels of monkeys. You know, you've got the monkeys above yeah. pulling you up and then you're pulling other people with you. And I'm like, I love that analogy because that's what we've got to do. You know, we've got to be pulled up by people, but we also have to pull others up with us. Like oh, I want to put a barrel of monkeys behind me now. I love that. <laughs> actually, I've always got a barrel of monkeys somewhere. But, yeah, I think it's a great analogy. I just loved it. That is 
brilliant because it's fun, it's colourful, it's simple, but it's powerful. Oh, absolutely. And it's, you know, it's like giving and taking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because you're holding on to someone and you're holding on to someone. And that's what we do. It's absolutely what we do. Yeah. yeah. And that's where if you're building that support around you, you, you know that you can step out and if you if something goes wrong there's someone there to catch you to lift you up again yep Um, so i think that support around and building your own confidence is so important yeah absolutely and yeah women are more likely to look at their they identify their flaws like that it's the easiest thing but to identify their strengths they've got to ask other people no the excuses that i hear coming out of women's mouths it's like oh my gosh yeah i'm I'm the queen of excuses when i get going as well yeah yeah we all all got it in us but you know again my support community around me goes ah you're excused that's more excuses and we go yeah okay you called me (laughs) yeah yeah you need to have a community that lovingly calls you out yeah no my community my little group of people who i work closest with will lovingly say, Rosie, I call bullshit on that. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 And they do it lovingly yeah. and hard acidly. And we always joke about how, um, um, you know, if you can picture um, there's gifts and stuff, those little little video thingies, every time you see those ones where there's a little penguin and there's always one penguin that shoves another penguin into the water or, like, you know, yeah. pushes them down a hill, I always joke that that's me because I'm like this lovely, cute penguin, and then I just go, Nah, you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. But yeah. it's like, and you know, you're stepped up in your business, and those people who do step up yeah. and keep on putting themselves out, you know, my first book I wrote, it was my story, and I felt so emotionally connected to it. It was one of the hardest things to hand that manuscript over to my editor. Yeah. But I've done it and it feels so good to have done it. And I, the people who've read it have changed things yeah. in their life about it. So, you know, the more that you can step out and the more you have confidence to do that, the more you're going to change the people in your world as well. Yeah, the bigger your impact. And it's funny because you won't realise, I see this every now and then, I'll think, um, oh, look, you know, I'm just doing what I'm doing. And then I'll get a message from someone saying, what you've been putting out there has had a massive impact on me and you know this is why blah 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 and then i have a big teary because it's so beautiful and i'm like oh that's my definition of success and that's brilliant um and it's because if i didn't do you know podcasts and i didn't do facebook lives and didn't actually get out there people think that it's easy it's only easy now because i took those first steps that were terrifying oh how scary is your first podcast or your first webinar or you you know it's like is anyone going to turn up and you get three people register and you're like oh it's only three but i'm going to show up for those three and then the next one yes my first speaking gig i don't think i breathe but like i don't think i took a breath for 30 minutes um i was like a poor woman and i um (laughs) and i don't think i made one piece of common sense sentence i was just jibber jabber (laughs) <laughs> that hasn't changed much over the years but i just i'm more confident about it um, but it was just a colossal disaster and and that's fine nobody went oh my god you get off um <clears throat> but at the same time it's you know i knew that it was, it was a shocker absolute shocker but it was my first step and that's massively important and i'm still alive i didn't die of embarrassment yeah. Nothing happened afterwards that was good, bad, or ugly, except that I had done the first one, and I knew what, like, the importance of stopping and taking a breath was the priority in my next one. Yeah. And so each time I went, well, that needs improving, and so I just add to each time I do something, try and add, um, you know, a level of, of quality or whatever to it, because you can't. You, you've got to just step up you've got to do it even if it, and then if it's crappy you get a good story out of it so there's no losing and start in in a support you know somewhere where you're going to get support when you step out and do it for the first time yeah well see yeah i didn't i didn't know anybody in the room but luckily i never knew them and i never saw them again <laughs> <laughs> yes i took on the role of chair at a local women's association just so that I could stand up in front of the room every time we met, every month for lunch, and speak. And I found, and you know, I used to be a not breather, and then I would gasp for breath, 
and then I'd sound nervous and then I'd be like, everyone thinks I'm nervous, but I'm feeling quite comfortable, but everyone thinks I'm nervous. So now I'm going to be nervous. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I learned to breathe. And then you start breathing and you feel every other gap with um. Mm. Um, because mm, um, you're terrified of silence. Yeah. yeah. Best thing I did actually for speaking was join, um, well, I was just going as a guest most of the time because my mum, my husband was a member, um, was of B&I because B&I, you do your little infomercial every week. Mm-hmm. And, the, and I, every time, I haven't been for years now, but whenever there was a new person that would come, and this is me as well, you would see them stand up and every part of their body is shaking. And they're an adult and you would never have thought in your wildest dreams that other adults, male and female, would be yeah. terrified to stand up for 30 seconds and tell us what they did but yeah. we all are and then you get more and more confident as you do it and in the end you just get up and go hey this is me la 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 and it becomes second nature exactly yeah, yeah. it's that it's just stepping up all the time yeah and business is about that and i think if you're not stepping up you're stagnating as well yeah and you're not serving yourself at yeah. all if you do that So let's have a look, if you can let us know a little bit about what you do in your business um, and and how you've gotten to where you are today, which is probably what I should have started this week. Look, I I help businesses with their marketing, basically, Mm -hmm. to help them understand it. Um, You talk about those warm moments. I had a client of mine who I've done a bit of work for and she's done a couple of my programs and stuff and she messaged me over the Christmas holidays and just said, you know, I just wanted to let you know that you've made marketing fun for me and I understand it and I'm applying it to my business and I'm, you know, seeing changes and I'm, you know, I understand now that marketing is so important and to get it across my whole business. And I'm like, that just filled me up. And as soon as she said marketing's fun, I'm like, well, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And we we make it complicated. So I help, um, yeah, my clients with their marketing. Also stuff that's holding them back from putting things out. Um, so we tend to go in a lot of mindset stuff. We tend to do a lot of balance work. So I can work in two ways. I do um, just straight out coaching mm-hmm. with clients. And then the other way is that we actually can take on all your marketing. So we step you through downloading your brain about what you want in a marketing strategy, basically, but making it fun. Mm-hmm. Doing a template, but a template that's unique for you as well. So none of this, you know, just copy and paste stuff. Yeah. Um, and then just look after your marketing for you um or in partnership with you so we call it a partnership yeah because i i'm a strong believer that you know, we've had clients in the past have just gone oh you're going to do all my marketing and then they hand it over to you and walk away it's like hang on a minute uh-huh. <laughs> so part of your business what are you doing yeah yeah okay so one of the things that i wanted to to touch on so i love that you do um you know the whole partnership thing with people and they're working on their brand and their message with you because you know that that just makes life a lot easier it can be actually quite hard to um market yourself easier to market other people um and you've got some uh, marketing tips to share today um for example around savvy research you want to elaborate on that yeah look i think this really encompasses what we've kind of already spoken about today but i think that there's, um, we've got a marketing model that we use on all of our clients and it's around research strategy campaigns. So it's that top level stuff before you get into your marketing funnels. And the research or having study research is about understanding your business and understanding how you fit into your business as well. Yeah, yeah. And you know, understanding your products, your services, your customers, your competitors and yourself. Basically. Yeah, it's amazing how many people can't answer questions around that. I know. It's like, you know, who's, who are you you know, A, competing against? But also get down to your products and services. And you know, I'm working with a client at the moment. They have so many products and services that it's stretching their business thin. Yeah. Like, if you want to keep all these products and services, you need to resource them more or let's just, like, get down to what's making you money. Yeah, exactly. You know, one of the analogies that I've used recently is, you know, when you go into a restaurant, say you go into a, a Thai restaurant, and it's like oh, the whole Thai thing and you know that it's going to be delicious Thai food and then you go into another restaurant and they do fish and chips, they do Chinese food and they do um, a little bit of um, what else, something else, um, sandwiches or something like that on the side and you kind of go, um, so what are, you, what are you actually really good at? 
you know, is this going to be awful fish and chips or is this going to be awful Chinese? Um, you know, like it's, it's once you start doing everything, everyone goes, oh, okay, so this is sort of a little bit of half-assed everything yeah. instead of, you know, this beautiful, simple, targeted something. Yeah. Um, and you do, you go in there and you think, hmm, food poisoning, possible, you know, and that's not the way you approach a nice restaurant that knows what they're actually delivering. Absolutely. And, and it comes back to people who go, my customer's anyone. Yeah. <laughs> and you go, but it's not anyone, like any, not, it's not going to be everybody that's going to come into your business and like it. Like, yeah. it's just, that's just not the way it is. Yeah, and that's when you say to them, okay, so I've got a lady who lives across the road. She's probably, um, you know, late 80s. She's kind of been in and out of hospital recently. Is she a target market? No. no. So there's one out. Um, yeah. Shall we go through the whole street? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, it's not everyone. It's just and, uh, so, yeah, it's like really, if you understand who your customer is, you know, writing ideal clients, avatars, profiles, whatever you want to call it, then everything, you know, you can then fit your products and services to those customers. You can look at who your competitors really are. And it could be um, not necessarily people who are in your thing. So, you know, think of swim schools, for example. It may not be that it's another swim school. It could be that you're competing against the soccer club and the dance club and, you know, all these other places that are taking your customer away from you. So I think it's just that being really savvy with understanding all about your business and getting that foundation there yeah yeah and so with that that's a great example you know what's the pain that you're easing what's the solution and outcome that you're providing and yeah. what other options do people have to satisfy that same sort of criteria what makes you different yeah yeah, yeah. so um so looking at dynamic strategies so goals um to make sure that you're moving forward you've got some why, why would you bother doing that yeah so if you don't have a goal in place, <laughs> you don't know where you're heading, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and I think more importantly, you don't know when you can celebrate. Yes. Because celebration is so important in business. So if you say, my goal is to onboard three new clients in this quarter and you onboard the three clients, you can celebrate. You can take yourself for a massage or have a movie day or go out with the girls or whatever you want to do. So if you don't have those goals in place, you don't know where you're heading to and what you're going to and, you know, and to celebrate it. And when I talk to people about their marketing, it can't just be standalone. So we, took, we look at business goals, we look at life goals, and then we come into, well, how does your marketing goals fit in with that? Mm -hmm. Because often life goals and business goals are quite aligned and business goals and marketing goals are very much aligned. So you mm -hmm. achieve your, your business goals, there's levels of marketing that you need to do. Yeah, but sort of bringing it all in together and making sure that they're actually going to drive you forward as well. So if you said, I'm going to onboard three clients in the next quarter, but you know you've already got six people in your lead funnel, so you know, chances are that you're probably going to convert at least three pretty easily. Let's make it you know, nine new clients or six new clients or something that's going to stretch you as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's an interesting point about your life goals and your business goals because if they don't align with each other um, and you're, you're aiming for some business goals that are going to impact negatively what you're envisaging, you know, your life to be like, you know, the family set up or holidays or whatever it might be, yeah. then, yeah, there's going to be this, um, yeah, this conflict there. So it's a really good point to identify those together yeah. to make sure they're cohesive. Yeah. And, you know, values coming to it and everything as well because, you know, it's, if you're creating a business, and I think now that we're in this world of a lot of micro and small businesses, it's very much about who the owner is as well. So, you know, it's about you've got to connect with it as well. Yeah, and it never used to be like that. You know, it was, it was just the business, you know, and the person in there that you might have connected with and the boss was kind of, or the owner was this elusive, didn't, you know, it wasn't a big thing, yeah. And and even when I started my business, it was still at that stage where you kind of, and people still think sometimes this is the case, where you felt like it had to be us and we when you did your communications. Whereas now people want to connect with you. So saying that it's just you and that you're running the show is actually a really, really good way to connect with people. And so they know, they, they build that no like trust factor with yeah. you rather than just your logo. 
exactly. And look, 15 years ago when I started my business, it was definitely about the branding and I created beautiful branding and I had a business name which was Visionary. Um, and Visionary evolved over the years into doing different things and it all sat underneath the same branding and it was fine. And we were talking earlier um, offline that last year I changed and I got rid of Visionary, you know, 14 years of having this one brand and I took the, you know, took it away, <laughs> which was kind of hard. Yeah. But I knew that I had to move forward as well. And that moving forward meant that I had to brand under my own name. Mm -hmm. I put out a book, I'm out speaking, people are getting to know who I am. Yeah. So I had to brand under my own name as well. And I could have continued running with two different brands mm -hmm. and I did for a little while, but it was still my heading. <laughs> oh, it's so hard, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> let's just make this simple you know I talk to my clients about having being simple or not being simple in your business but having simplistic ideas in your business yeah um so I'm like I've got to take that on board myself oh yeah it's, it's easy to tell other people how how they <laughs> <laughs> but you know what my business took off when I finally stepped up as the face of my business you know I'm kind of hidden behind the brand virtually yours because I felt like especially when I was still doing web development and design work I didn't want to take away from my members. I didn't want to be another VA who's in front of the other VAs. It just didn't feel right. And so when I stopped doing that as, you know, marketing myself as a VA um, and focused on building the community and training and networking and all that sort of stuff, I was able to step up as the owner without feeling that conflict. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly um, I started to be known because you know a name, not a brand. Um, and you connect with the face and you, it, it just made a massive difference when I just went, okay, it's, you know, remember I had Stella, Stella was the face of virtually yours, um, that, and she, you know, that way it allowed me to just kind of do my thing and she could be the brand. Yeah. And then when I stopped doing that and I can use her in little things, but when I became that face and I stepped up and said, actually, this is, this is me and my business. Um, I started just converting so many more people because there was more loyalty there, yeah. that connection. Yeah, and I think that that's a real evolution in business that we are seeing more of is more people are stepping out and going, you know what, I'm going to either keep my brands but keep them smaller and behind me and I'm stepping out as my own name. Yeah. You know, and that's about connecting with your audience and putting that personality there. And, look, and I, know I work one-on-one -on -one with all of my clients you know, so it's, and I have a limited number of clients that I work with because I am one on one with them. Mm. Um, you know, there's no fancy, you know, put them into funnels and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, they're working with me. So, why not put my name there? That's right. Yeah. It's, it's all part of that consistency and, um, and knowing what they're getting right from the start. You know, not this, yeah, this facade that we've all relied on in the past. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, life and business has to meet, your values have to meet, and then your marketing goals have to be integrate or yeah, be integrated and holistic with everything you're doing in your business as well. Yeah, yeah. excellent. All right, so what, what are authentic campaigns? Yeah, so we talked a little a lot then about the connection to your brand, and you do need to be connected to your brand, and it is about the person that sits behind the brand. Um, you, also need to, <laughs> absolutely. you also need to bring passion into it as well because if you're not passionate when you go out and sell your business, people are going to see right through that and that's where your authenticity comes into it. You know, if you're truly, if your business and your life values and goals are all aligned and you truly understand why you're in business and what you want your business to deliver to people, then you're going to be authentic when you go out and sell that message. Yes. And if you're wiffle waffle, and, and I've been there where I've been changing my business and evolving as a person, I've gone out and gone, oh, well, you know, I kind of, I've written a book and I sort of, I do marketing for people and, you know, how would you like me to help you and I'll help you. Yeah. So I like, I'll yeah. do, you know, I'll be whatever you want. Um, so the more that you can become refined in all of that, the more authentic it's going to be and the more people are going to connect with you. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to give them the job of working out how you can help them. No. That's yeah, um, I've said this story many, many times. I had someone who needed some VA work and I liked her and I said, well, tell me how you can help me in my business. And she said, I can do anything. And I went, oh, that's too hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm busy. I, I, like I was trying to help and she gave me a job to work out how she could fit in and I'd have to guess and hope that that was 
what I came up with would align with her when she needed to say what she could offer. Mm -hmm. And that's her job to figure out, you know, who the target market is. It's not the client's job to figure out what you do. You need to be so clear about it so they can go, yes, no, yes, no. And, oh, that person over there needs that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think if you're authentic and part of that also is, you know, if, if you're hearing you need to go out and do a Facebook Live and you step out and do it and then you do it, but it is just so not you, your message isn't, isn't on point, you're, you know, it just sometimes you just don't have to do it because everybody else is doing it as yeah. well. And, you know, I was involved in a conversation on, um, in a Facebook group around the how Facebook lives have become diluted as well, that everybody's doing them and there's some really poor Facebook lives that are out there that people are tuning out to them now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've, got, you've got literally about 10 to 15 seconds for people yeah. to decide if they're going to listen or not. And then about 45 seconds later, they're going to decide again whether they're yeah. I've had enough now. So, yeah, it's about being authentic to you, to your messaging, to who your audience is as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not everybody's audience is hanging out on Facebook. Not, you know, not all on LinkedIn. You know, it's, you know, you've got to go where your audience is as well. Yeah, otherwise it's just going to be a party of one. And <laughs> like, hello. I'm not making any money, but I'm out there doing my Facebook lives. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, if you know if you know who you're doing it for and that they they're just that's what they were after. I mean, I, I do with my one week intensive. You know, I do a Facebook live for an hour a night from Monday to Friday in this one week at eight o'clock at night because that's when these people, these women, have got the kids down to bed or they've got home from work or whatever. So it's the right time for them, and they sit on that call on that Facebook live for an hour and they all chat and interact and everything. Now, if I picked a different time or a different location and didn't uh, target the right people, then I'd be sitting there talking to myself for now. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah definitely. But, yeah. So, so once you've got all of that, that's kind of your big picture marketing stuff. And then you get into, you know, what a lot of people call marketing funnels or sales funnels or all of that sort of termy stuff. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's, you know, that's the sales part of your business. And that's where, you know, you're, you're getting people and you're dragging them, well, not dragging, you're encouraging them through your funnel. Nice. Dragging them, kicking them, <laughs> dragging them. <laughs> That's an old method of marketing. The new one is that you're, you're pulling them, pushing you, coercing them, <laughs> getting them interested in you. And I think a lot of that, you know, you really need to play to empathy as well, you know, because you're, you're wanting to be getting in the head of your, of your potential mm -hmm. customer. So you need to be empathetic to what they're doing, where they're at in their life, um, and also be grateful. Yes. And just to continue, you know, you know McDonald's upselling. You know, do you want fries with that? You know, it's like how can you continue to nurture people who are in your funnel, who have made a sale, or even people who are connected with you who they may never, ever buy with you, yes. but they're going to be your number one fan and they're out there referring everyone to you. Yeah. So it's about you know, having that, being empathetic to people who are in your funnel and being grateful that they've signed up to your newsletter or they're following you on Facebook or they're you know, attending your free webinars or whatever they're doing, just to be grateful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You just cannot take it for granted. No. No. And I know the number of times that I, you know, I might do all this free stuff with people and then they go, and you're going to buy from me? And I'm like, oh, actually, I'm not ready to buy from you just yet. Yeah. And they drop you. It's <laughs> like, but I might come back and buy from you. It's just not right now am I ready to buy from you. So can you keep me, you know. Still, in the loop. Keep me in the loop. Still, you know, make me feel that you're grateful that I'm still following you and stuff. Yeah. I mean, how often do you see it? I've been in business for my 14th year and 15th for you. And I've seen time and time again where there'll be a touch point here and then a year or two later, someone will go, oh, now's the time. Yeah. Um, I remember, I, I, you know, I met you two years ago. I saw something that you did or attended a webinar and they stayed in, in contact or whatever it is. And then they go, oh, now, now I'm ready to, to buy all. Oh, here, I've got a referral for you. Yeah. Um, you, you just can never discount them. And plus, we're all here to make an impact. And if we can be impacting them anyway, even if they never come and buy, then that's part of our, you know, our why we're here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think um, you, you sort of get into this 
mainstream thought around marketing funnels, sale funnels, click funnels, all that. And it's just about the numbers. Mm. It's just about getting people in and growing your, you know, your followers and your likers. And, and yes, that's important, but actually being grateful that they're there as well. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm one of those people who I, I will unsubscribe if I'm starting to get that weekly reminder, uh, sorry, daily reminder of something that's coming up um where they you know and then they and it costs an absolute fortune and i'd really like to go and that's why i've expressed an interest but it's just not going to happen yeah. and i keep getting all these emails and you know it's all automated obviously and there's nothing helpful in there it's just more sales and whatnot and um it just it's it just makes you feel worse that you can't <laughs> you know it's like oh can't i click a button saying Dead set, there's no chance I'm going to this, but possibly in the future, if, if yeah. you don't, you know, harass me, I would be looking at coming. Where's that button? Yeah, put me on that newsletter list that you send, you know, once a month or every couple of months, just yeah. to not the every week thing. <laughs> yeah, I can't handle the every week thing. It does my head in. Mind you, I'm so inconsistent with my newsletters. I actually send them out when I've got something to say. So, um, <laughs> so some weeks there might, there might be one or two because it'll be like a new blog post or it might be, um, you know, something like a recording that's available or something like that. And then the next week there'll be nothing because I'm not going to make up stories just to email you. But I think also that that's, that's okay because when you are sending them out, people are going, what's Rosie got to say today? Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to have right. a higher chance. Another one. Yeah. Yeah. Than if you're just churning every stuff out just for the yeah. sake. Yeah, and it, you know, it took me a while to be okay with that. You know, it's like, oh, I've got to be consistent, and because consistency is great, but I'm consistently inconsistent, um, and so you know, that's got to count for something. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I find that you know, getting where our inboxes are always inundated. Mm -hmm. So if I'm getting emails that don't actually say anything that's that's useful to me, then I'm going to unsubscribe. And I have no issue with people unsubscribing from my newsletter either because I used to be like, oh my God, someone unsubscribed. Now, yeah, it's just like, sweet, cool. Okay, so that's narrowed down, you know, who I'm marketing to. Yeah, yeah. And they've identified that's not what, it's not for them. And that's brilliant. Right. Yeah. yeah. Again, be grateful. Yeah. That they're not yeah. just sitting in there being a number. Yeah, exactly. Doing nothing with it. And with me thinking, oh yeah, there's something there and it's not. You know, you just don't need that. No. So, all right. So um, what else do you have to say to us before we wrap up today around marketing? I love talking this stuff with you. It's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> but I really think that it's, you've got to, you've got to be confident mm -hmm. and you've got to go out and sell yourself. And it doesn't matter what you're doing in business. It's about you. Mm -hmm. And you really need to step up and get some support around helping you to do that. Really understand who your customer is. Understand yourself. Set some goals, if nothing else, just so you can celebrate. And don't um, set too big a goals that you're never going to achieve them, but set um, some goals that will stretch you as well. Yeah. Um, and just be authentic when you're out there talking to people and show your passion for what you do. And if you're not passionate about what you do, then maybe you need to look at what you're doing. Yeah, and adjust it. You can really tell the difference in a room of people who is feeling completely um, aware of who they're targeting and what they're doing. Um, and look, they may be faking the confidence bit, but they're conf like they're, they're, you know they know who they're marketing and you can tell the people who don't. And it's okay if you don't yet, yeah, you've got to work on it. Absolutely. And look, pivot your business. I've changed my business so much since I started 15 years ago. Yeah. If I think back to what it was, you know, I was running events 15 years ago. Yeah. You know, it's, I've just changed it so much. And it's okay to pivot your business. Yeah. Yep, as long as you keep communicating with people. I mean, I've seen, you've seen my business evolve and I've seen yours evolve over the years and we've always stayed in touch, always, you know, made sure that we're there for each other as needed and, um, and it's, it's never a bad thing to, to pivot when you need to. I think identifying that and um, making it work for you, bringing it around so it works for you and so that you're able to connect with the, the right people yeah. is what is going to make it so that you don't just throw in the towel and, and say this is too hard. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. One of the things we were talking about last year, I remember, was um, it was at that point where I, I feel like there's a, I don't know if I'm just seeing less of it now or if there actually is less of it now, is around, and we touched on this right at the start, 
how everyone is selling the dream <clears throat> and putting pressure on, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, putting pressure on women in particular because we're, you know, we're sensitive souls sometimes <laughs> um, to be achieving what their definition of success is. So all around big money, big cars, big houses, um, and hustling and getting out there and doing all that sort of stuff and, and how you're a failure if you're not making this sort of money. And if you use their system, you'll sort that. Like you said before, with I made $10,000 in the first week and so can you. I'm seeing a lot less of that out there now. And there's, I think there's more of a trend and more of awareness from people. There's been so many who have been stunned by it um, that it's coming around a bit more to be where people are finding um, support and connections around them that are more authentic. Are you finding that? I agree. And I think maybe because I've removed it off my newsfeed, I don't know. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's what it is for me or if it really is. <laughs> so I don't need that. I don't need that in my life. Mm. <laughs> that sort of negativity. So yeah, I think but I think people are more aware and there's a lot more people just seeing through the bullshit basically. Yeah. Which is great. And we're hanging out for that to happen. We're just like Yeah, we talk about it often. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do feel like the business world is, is a lot nicer place at the moment, which is good um, because it was feeling very um, inundated with the negativity for a while there. Yeah. Um, but now I'm just seeing some really beautiful businesses thriving and communities thriving and, and that's just makes all of the stuff that you've talked about today that little bit easier. Absolutely. There's some beautiful people in business out there and women doing some really awesome inspiring things yeah absolutely yeah so where can my listeners find you if they want to connect with you rachelallen.com.au so i'm on facebook i'm on linkedin um i play a little bit on instagram but i'm not really active there <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yeah, but i don't play um and yes yeah, so, and obviously you can subscribe to newsletters or whatever as well but yeah reach out say hi Beautiful. We'll put links to that as well in our show notes. And we realised before that spelling of your surname is very important in your website. So Alan is A-L-L-A-N. Yes. Um, and uh, we'll put those links in there. And I just want to thank you so much for sharing your thoughts today. It's been really, really lovely. Thanks, Rosie. As always, it's beautiful to speak with you. Take care. Hey, 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 thank you for listening to the Virtually Yours podcast, Outsourcing Mysteries Exposed. Between now and our next session, I know you're going to be hanging out to take some action on outsourcing in your business. So head on over to virtuallyyours.com.au and you can download some information there about the best ways to outsource for business growth. If you're a virtual assistant, make sure you join us. We have an amazing virtual assistant community at Virtually Yours, Aussie VAs connecting and helping each other grow. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you at the next podcast.